greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, and I thank the Lord for once again uh, giving us an opportunity to study God's word. So we just completed the study of uh, the book of Ezra. And uh, from today, we will be beginning to study the book of Nehemiah. So let me uh, quickly give an introduction to this, uh, the book of uh, Nehemiah. Uh, the, the first thing is, uh, before, you know, the Hebrew Bible, in the uh, before the, even the Hebrew Bible was written, in the Old uh, Testament times, uh, the book of Nehemiah was part of the book of Ezra. In fact, it was the book of Ezra was called as the first book of Ezra and the book of Nehemiah was called as the second book of Ezra. So that is how they both were clubbed together. Uh, so that is how it was. And later, uh, the both the books were separated as uh, the book of Ezra and the book of uh, Nehemiah. And the second thing that we need to know is, as we have understood you know, while uh, meditating the book of Ezra, that we see there are two returns that are actually you know chronicled in the book of Ezra and here in the book of Nehemiah we see the third return so this is the third return where from Babylon the exiles are coming back to Jerusalem so this is the third return that we will be studying in the book of Nehemiah at the end of the the 70 years so after the 70 years the first return began and then after some time the second return happened and now the third return. This is that's what, that's what we study in this book of Nehemiah. And these three returns, you know, happened under four leaders. Under four leaders, the first return, uh, God used uh, Zerubbabel and uh, uh, Joshua uh, as to lead the people. And in the second return, God uh, primarily used uh, Ezra. And now in the third return, God use, uses Nehemiah. Of course, there were others who also played an important role. And as we know, uh, prophet, uh, the prophets Haggai, uh, Malachi, uh, Zechariah, they, they were all you know, were used by God to speak to people. But to lead people, to give an overall leadership, these were the four leaders who God had used. So here, the, the book of Nehemiah, we primarily, you know, we uh, see how God used uh, the prophet, uh, the uh, person Nehemiah, uh, to lead uh, God's people and uh, one of the you know the significant uh, thing that comes out of uh, that we learn from the book of Nehemiah is the building of the wall so first we understand that in the first return when the people came from Babylon back to Jerusalem their very first task was to build the temple to rebuild the temple so uh, that is what they began to do they began to rebuild the temple first they erected the altar then they began to rebuild the temple. And second, when God brings Ezra, he uses Ezra to appoint the, uh, the leaders, to appoint the priests and the Levites to do the service in the temple. And uh, also God use, uh, used Ezra to uh, help to uh, reform the spiritual life of the common people. So Ezra did uh, both of that. And thirdly, now you God is using Nehemiah, God used Nehemiah to build the wall around Jerusalem, to build the wall around Jerusalem. Uh, because those, the walls were the, the defenses. You know, a, a city without a wall is a defenseless city. So it needs to have the walls. The walls were also broken. So first, uh, the temple is uh, rebuilt. And secondly, you know, the priests and the Levites are appointed to do the service in the temple and the lives of the common people, the spiritual lives are reformed. And now the outer walls are being uh, done. And that's this is where Nehemiah comes into picture. And as we know, you know, God used Nehemiah to accomplish a great mission, a very big task in a very little time, you know, in a matter of 52 days. In a matter of 52 days, uh, under the leadership of Nehemiah, this great task of building a, a wall around the entire city of Jerusalem was done. The protection was uh, laid. So even as we meditate uh, this, the whole uh, the book of Nehemiah, the, all the chapters, so we will be doing it you know, under the common heading of walls. So the 13th chapter, we'll be looking at uh, different walls. And I, uh, even as we go on medit meditating this chapter, 
we'll be looking at the different walls that need to be built that need to be rebuilt uh, either to be built or to be rebuilt in your life and my life so for the the first chapter uh, this is the title that i would like to give so that we can uh, meditate on the context of the chapter is walls to prioritize so this is how uh, uh, we're going to begin the study of the first chapter with the title on walls to prioritize so from this whole chapter the first chapter introduces us introduces us to nehemiah of who he is and uh, how god uh, used him or began to you know stir his heart towards the vision towards god's purpose and i i, I believe that you know even as we meditate the first chapter and also the forthcoming chapters god will also use our use us to you know rebuild the areas in not only in our life and also in others life and in god's kingdom and uh, you know right now even as we the whole world is going through this uh, the pandemic uh, of covid-19 you know uh, people's many people's lives are shattered uh, people are in uh, distress uh, people are with uncertainty people are with a lot of questions you know but god will turn things around so when things turn around you know god is always you not know, looking for people to people to rebuild things right now you know the lives that have been uh, disturbed uh, systems that have processes and systems that have been uh, uh, displaced god will use i strongly believe that he will use his church god will use his people to rebuild so that is why i i also i believe that you know our studying of uh, the book of ezra the book of nehemiah which uh, significantly talks about rebuilding will you know give us those principles to do what god expects us to do you know post uh, covid-19 uh, so i strongly believe that this is a, a preparation and a god's plan in actually doing that and uh, for that you know as we have seen the title we need to prioritize so let me uh, quickly read a verse the last verse of the first chapter it says here this is a prayer of nehemiah and how does he pray there o lord let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man at the time i was cup bearer to the king you know even as we read this uh, verse you know that's a great uh, an inspiration and also an encouragement the reason is you know nehemiah is not a clergy you know nehemiah is not a full timer nehemiah is someone who is holding a secular position and you know this is a and god is using him for a greater task so whoever we might be you know either we may be a person who is a full time minister or we may be a person in a secular position wherever god has placed us you know god can use us to build his kingdom hallelujah now that's the you know the very first message that actually comes across as we begin to read and meditate the first chapter he is a comparer in the palace for the king and god god began to use this man whatever position that you and i are in whatever place that you and i are in you know irrespective of that god can use us that is the encouragement that god uh, gives us and you know for us to understand for god to you know use uh, a, a, a person of uh, whatever background they are in or whatever profession they are in uh, we need to prioritize we need to understand what is what needs to be our high priority what needs to be the top priority how we need to you know order things in our life and that is what we're going to you know, look at in this first chapter so i'm going to take you through this first chapter uh, with the with four subtitles or four areas that needs to be prioritized so we will be you know uh, consequently looking at four areas to prioritize so that god can use you and me to build his kingdom to build the lives of people to rebuild you know uh, people's life and uh, things uh, as as the days to, uh, come so the first thing that we need to prioritize is concern not carelessness it we need to prioritize concern and not carelessness you know as we begin to read this uh, the first chapter of uh, nehemiah the opening verses it says the words of nehemiah son of hakaliah in the month of chislev in the 20th year 
while i was in susa the capital one of my brothers hanani came with certain men from juda and i asked them about the jews that survived those who had escaped the captivity and about jerusalem and he and he gets a report they replied the survivors there in the province who escaped captivity are in great trouble and shame the wall of jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been destroyed by fire when i heard these words i sat down and wept and mourned for days fasting and praying before the god of heaven so here you know uh, nehemiah encounters a few people who returned back from jerusalem to uh, susa and here as they as he encounters these people he asks about them and he also asks about you know jerusalem now we, one thing we understand is nehemiah uh, was born in uh, exile so there is very very less possibility of him uh, to have actually you know gone to jerusalem you look at the historical records we understand that nehemiah has has not been to jerusalem ever yes uh, so now uh, but he knows the history and now he is getting to hear first hand from people who have experienced on the field of the reality of the fact of what is actually going on in jerusalem so as he gets the news you know, he responds with prayer here we see you know nehemiah's concern we see nehemiah's concern here uh, this is the question you know that i want to the opening question that i want to pose before all of us to ponder upon how do we respond to news how do we respond you know that because of uh, the social media and uh, because of media you know you and i are bombarded with so much of information we are bombarded with so much of uh, news uh, in an instant you know we come to know of things that happen at anywhere in the world right that at that very instant we get to know get to know of, about uh, things happening uh, in whichever part of the world but how do we respond in fact no nehemias response teaches us a beautiful principle of how to respond to the information the news that comes to us as a man of god you know what does he do the fourth verse says when i heard these words i sat down and wept and mourned for days fasting and praying before the god of heaven so he here is a man who is not careless here is a man who is not concerned but here is a man who is concerned with the things that are happening in the world why because nehemiah knows that god is interested in what is happening in this world now you and i worship and serve a god who is not distant from this world who is very much you know involved with the things that are happening around so if god is interested of things that are happening in the world so you and i also need to be uh, very much interested and very much uh, need to uh, respond to what's happening so he is not careless he is not concerned less rather he is quite concerned with what's happening so that, that that becomes his priority in fact you know this is how god lays his vision in hearts of people this is how god lays his vision so if uh, when when somebody you know comes to me and asks uh, to me but the what uh, what is god's vision for me what is it that god wants me to do in his kingdom Uh, what is what what ministry does he wants me to get involved in so my first question always would be to that person is what is it that which is bothering you know in your heart uh, the, the 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 top the top thing that which is bothering your heart you know when you actually when we look at it we can you know uh, and when we shuffle through that we understand you know uh, that uh, what is actually where god is actually driving us towards uh, in fact you know i uh, i do a and workshop to understand our personal vision and uh, mission and goals and this is how i start with the question that i right now you know, pose before you that what are your concerns what is it that which is actually bothering and then you know, to put the put that all down and then to understand our you know the circle of influence uh, maybe i would not have enough time to actually do that now maybe we we'll, we should do that sometime later but you know this is what you know uh, this is how god uh inspires people this is how god intervenes with people this is how god you know uh shows his interest to us what is it that which is in god's heart so here in nehemiah is bothered nehemiah is concerned 
with those uh, with the condition of uh, jerusalem because it, it gets to know that they are in great trouble they are in shame the walls of jerusalem are broken down the gates are destroyed by fire and you know he is he, not careless he doesn't you know uh, become careless but he becomes very much concerned uh, bob pierce the founder of world vision and also uh, subsequently founded samaritan pulse he says uh, something like this bob pierce says let my heart be broken by the things that break the heart of god now he says let my heart be broken by the things that break the heart of god you know when you and i shuffle through the different troubles that we see that we hear and when we take that to a heart and when we commit that you know in prayer to god god would help help us will help us to understand our life's purpose to understand you know the vision that he has kept for us the calling that he has kept for us and through it is through that is what you know, we we begin to you know prioritize things so whatever it is even even, even today you know uh, i would uh, sincerely request you know all of uh, you that we have uh, partaking in the study to you know to put down you know to write it down what is it that which is actually bothering you it it could be something that which is happening right around in your community or it could be something that which is happening in the whole world or something that which is in your family you know and then shuffle it through in prayer you know take it to lord in uh, take it in prayer to the lord and ask him lord these are the things that are actually bothering me and you know what is it that you want me to do about it that will be a good exercise to start with and second the second area to prioritize he be prioritized concern the second is he prioritize confession and not condemnation confession and not condemnation when we see you know the the subsequent verses from verse 5 you know he begins to pray we we see you know the words in through which nehemiah actually prayed so those words are very well documented the fifth verse o lord god of heaven the great and awesome god who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments and then you go on I'll, let me read the last the later part of the sixth verse uh, look at look at his prayer look at nehemiah's prayer both i and my family have sinned we have offended you deeply he says both i and my family have sinned we have offended you deeply this look at you know nehemiah's uh, words you know the the prayer that he is praying uh, he is not he is not condemning others he is not saying you know the we in fact no it is not because of nehemiah that they went into exile it was because of his forefathers and others that he has uh, he was in exile but he's saying lord it's i who sinned lord it's uh, uh, it's we who have offended you deeply look at look at his words i want to look i want you to look at his attitude here you know what a what a humble what humility that he demonstrates in his prayer you know and i strongly believe you know that god ex- uh, wants us to be that humble in our prayer as well he is not condemning others for their sins and saying that uh, they are the ones who are responsible rather he is saying lord i am responsible he is saying lord what is what has ha- what has happened uh, you know in my community what has happened uh, to uh, to the to the jews is because of my sins that that is how he is praying you know he is a man of prayer in fact you know when you uh, we, we just finished the study of uh, ezra ezra as a person you know when we look when we looked at his life we see that you know many a times he talks about the word of god establishing the word of god you know he is a he is a man after after the word and nehemiah when we actually when we go on to uh, meditate all the other rest of the chapters also you will find uh, lots of times nehemiah is praying he is a man of prayer you now ezra was a man of uh, word and nehemiah was a man of prayer his life is completely soaked with uh, prayer both is essential you know even as we meditate in uh, nehemiah and nehemiah let me pass and uh, pause and let me you know, say this here you know the word and prayer need to go hand in hand you know uh, 
both need needs to be that, that that's that's uh, that's how it is well, the word we need to prioritize the word and also we need to prioritize uh, prayer also and you know the the hebrew name ezra means help the meaning of uh, the hebrew name ezra means help and the uh, the name nehemiah means comfort god of uh, god of comfort and the word uh, nehemiah is god who comforts uh, jehovah who comforts that's what nehemiah's prayer is help and comfort uh, the word and a prayer both has to have a balance so here is a man who is prioritizing prayer so first is becoming concerned whatever is you know we we are bothered uh, we don't become careless about it we begin to you know take it into heart think about it show concern towards that in fact i need to say this also here nehemiah is in a very good place right he is in the he is in he is in the capital city secondly he is in the palace okay so no way nehemiah is affected with what is happening in jerusalem he is no way affected he is in a good place he is in a palace you know he doesn't even need to be bothered no he can he can, he can just think that lord uh, lord i am thankful that you no know, that i have you have put you have kept me in a good place and maybe he could have you know said that you know those people have sinners that is why they are suffering you know he could have condemned them rather he is not doing that you know, though he is in a good place he is saying lord it is it is i who have actually sinned it is i who have actually offended you know, this is the heart of heart of a real true man of god you know the uh, a true a uh, woman of god should be a humility in prayer you know uh, a attitude of confession and not condemnation and i i can say i can boldly say this is the life that god would truly use this is the life that god would want to use you know in his kingdom and so he is prioritizing confession a man whose life is soaked with prayer and i wish and i pray that you know your life and my life will also be you know soaked with prayer whenever you know things come to a years whenever you we get to hear about Uh, things that are uh, troubling the world let us take it all to god in prayer let us you know uh, may the lord help us to prioritize that and thirdly we see uh, the third area that i want to show from this first chapter is conditional promise not compromised life conditional promise not compromised life let uh, let us quickly read the eighth verse if we read the eighth verse Nehemiah is actually still praying it's a part of his prayer remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses if you are unfaithful i will scatter you among the people the ninth verse but if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them though your outcasts are under the father's skies i will gather them from there and bring them to the place at which i have chosen to establish my name here in this in the prayer you know actually uh, nehemiah is reminding god of his own promises why because he knows nehemiah knows that god has promised to return his people from exile back to jerusalem when people will return in their hearts back to god this is what actually god promised when we uh, when we look at the old testament we look at the way god's uh, promises this of god promised to the people that if if you disobey i will you know take you away but when you return to me i will return you back uh, i think this is uh, it is very much applies to you know our personal lives also when we are away from god we go away from god's purpose and when we return back to god you know he we return back to god's purpose not only we return back to god eventually you know what happens is a purpose gets returned fruitful life gets returned you know our you know, grace and gifts get restored so much of things that actually happens here and uh, as i and I, as i have put the subtitle this promise is with a condition that is why i have said it's a conditional promise because god is saying if you return to me and keep my commandments undo them and then i will do this then i will return you back to jerusalem so the promise is always conditional if you remember and even one of the earlier meditations i have always said this god's promises are always conditional so only when we fulfill that condition 
no we can enjoy those promises that is what you know god is saying and and also you know on the on the other hand when we don't fulfill those conditions uh, god also you know uh, does what he has promised so for example god is saying if you are if you obey my words these are the blessings that will follow if you don't obey my word these are the curses that will follow so god keeps his word uh, he is 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 uh, god will not go back in his word the same way when we keep his word when we fulfill god's conditions his promises come to uh, pass you know it is not sufficient that we on the new year's day uh, pick up a promise card and just you know uh, rejoice over that you know uh, it's it's a good way it's a good uh, good reminder for us to you know take a promise for ourselves but the necessary thing is it is not just the promise card that is going to you know fulfill that verses in our lives or 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 not just you know simply saying those verses you know if we, uh, i have seen this you know with some people think that okay if i am going to uh, say out all the maybe 100 verses promise verses 1000 promise verses you know uh, things will get fulfilled in my life this is not the hindu mantra and that's what the hindus believe right so they think if you keep saying certain things it will happen <laughs> that that doesn't happen that the, the the bible doesn't work like that you know, god says of course i have given you these promises but i want you to you know fulfill the conditions i want you to you know return to me so that i can do this in your life that is how we you know uh, this happens so whenever we look at the a promise you know in a, in the bible we need to read the context and understand what has actually got what is the condition that god has actually set for the promise to be fulfilled this question should always be there if there is a promise there is a condition and here this the condition here is a life of returning back to god a life of separation a life of purity when uh, so here nehemiah is not just you know he is not just holding on to the promise he understands that i cannot uh, compromise my compromise my life so here he uh, it leads him to prioritize purity to prioritize holiness and the last area that we need to prioritize here is uh, carry out and not criticize carry out and not criticize the last verse says is again a part of his prayer oh lord let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in rever- revering your name give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man at the time i was cup bearer to the king so here first nehemiah hears you know the news he gets the news and as soon as he gets the news he becomes concerned about it he is not careless about it and he goes on to you know soak it in prayer he takes it to the lord in prayer and then he understands that you know i need to uh, i need to change i need to transform i need to return back to god he doesn't stop with that neither he criticizes uh, people for not doing what needs to be done what does he uh, pray that lord you give me success and grant me mercy so that i can do what i need to do so this is this is what you know this is how god begins to use his people uh, one is so we so you and i need to have that kind of a, an attitude that kind of a heart that lord what should i do you know again you know i i've uh, spoken much about moses uh, in our early meditation today also you know, let uh, let me remind about moses so when god comes looking for moses to do uh, to deliver his people through him moses goes on giving excuses all right so he gives excuses after other other he says lord i i am not eloquent i cannot speak i do not have the necessary experience or qualification all of that and then you know god is like you don't you don't bother i am with you i will do this through through you the same god you know, here uh, nehemiah is is someone who's like you know who understands that i need to do something so there is there's another interesting thing that we need to note here god is not coming to nehemiah and actually you know giving him a vision like god is god not come directly to him and say Naomi I want you to go and do this. Uh, God operates in different ways. For Isaiah, when Isaiah had the vision of God, he hears the voice, whom sh- whom shall I send? 
who will go for us. You know, sometimes, you know, we might also think that God will come and speak to us for us to hear like Isaiah. God doesn't work like that always. You know, God, didn't, God did not work like that in Nehemiah's life. Nehemiah, he saw something out there, a need that was out there. He had a concern for that and he commits to that. So, you know, sometimes for some people, God directly speaks. He makes them hear Nehemiah. Their experience is not the same. Yet he understands that I need to carry out this. I need to do something about it. If he, God can speak to us directly or God can show us a circumstance. God can show us a need. However God operates, it is you and I need to be sensitive to understand what God is asking us to do. That is what God is saying. So there are these four areas that we have looked at from the first chapter on things to prioritize so that God can prepare us to rebuild people, to rebuild his kingdom. One is to be concerned and not to be careless. When we do that, you know, we will be able to prioritize things. We will be able to put things first. And uh, secondly, and when we say prioritize, you know, uh, it is we need to put God first. We need to put his kingdom and his purpose first. Secondly, we need to have a humility in our, in our prayer a humility in a spiritual life of confession and not condemnation. The, a, a life that which is soaked in prayer, a life where, uh, is, uh, when, where, where we take everything to God in prayer. And thirdly, life where we understand that every promise of God goes with the condition and we, and we commit our life not to compromise but to fulfill God's promise and which leads us to a life of purity. And finally, uh, we do not criticize for things that do not happen, that are not happening out there, not complain, rather commit us, our life to carry out what God wants us to do. I quoted the uh, Bob Pierce, uh, where Bob Pierce says, let my heart be broken by the things that break the heart of God. So let me share a couple of incidents from uh, the life of Bob Pierce before and how did, you know, this world vision uh, one of the uh, largest Christian organizations in the world, World Vision. How, how, how did it start? You know, World Vision blesses people around the world. It's almost there in all the countries of the world, most of the countries of the world. Great work is being done even today. And Bob Pierce is gone, but uh, great work. How did this happen? Bob Pierce, you know, in, in the year 1947, he went to China. Uh, to speak in meetings there and when he went to China it was the first uh, he met with this lady called Beth Albert and Beth Albert was a missionary in China and she was working among the lepers the lepers in those days in China were actually you know uh, were meant to be killed the communist government did that they would not spare the lepers but Beth Albert, you know, cared for them. And uh, this, was the, this was the very first time that Bob Pierce, that young man, had encountered something like that. He had never seen lepers being cared by Christians. When he saw that, you know, it, it disturbed him. That, that there, was, there, was a, there was a trigger of God's vision in him. So God had used that incident, you know, to trigger his life towards doing something for God. In fact, uh, this is how even after uh, Beth passed away, Bob Pierce continued to support the work of leprosy mission around the world, in China and also in India. That uh, through Bob Pierce, though Bob Pierce was not directly involved, through Bob Pierce, 14 leprosy clinics were started and supported in China and India. You know, the, a vision was birthed through what he saw there. And secondly, in the same same year, he, he, he went on to another school. He had an invitation to speak to a few students in a Christian school, which was again run by another missionary lady called Tana, Tana Holkeboer. When Tana Holkeboer, he went to a, a school, uh, Bob Pierce went to a school, he spoke to the school. Many students, many children committed their life to Christ because of that meeting in which Bob Pierce uh, preached in that school. And after the meeting got over, uh, and when Bob Pierce was about to leave, 
he saw Tena with a small child in her hand. The small child in her hand. I just put those, some of the photographs on the slide. Uh, he saw the child uh, who looked weak uh, and battered. And he asked, inquired about this girl. And Tena said, you know, uh, Bob, you did uh, preach the gospel and ask, you know, the child children to commit their life to Christ. And today many children gave their life to Christ. But this girl who had committed her life to Christ was beaten up by her parents because of believing in Christ. You know, that broke uh, Bob Pierce's heart. He understood that there is a cost that these children are paying for becoming a Christian. For putting their faith in Jesus. They could not go back to their houses. If they go back to the houses, they are beaten up by their parents. And uh, and Bob Pierce asked uh, Beth this question. He asked uh, her this question saying, You will take care of her, won't you? you know, he asked her this question to Beth. That to Beth, uh, sorry, to Tena. The Tena, I, I, I believe that you will take care of, of her. You will feed her. This is what you know. Tena replied to Bob Pierce. She said, I am feeding as many children as I can. She replied. But then she go, went on to say something. She said, the question is, what are you going to do? She asked Bob Pierce, what are you going to do? He came back to his country, Bob Pierce, returned back to America. But this question uh, kept on bothering him. When he left uh, China, when he left the doorstep, he had five dollars on him. He gave that five dollars to Tena and told her, "You keep it. After I go back, I'll continue to support." You know, he not only began to support that work. God used that question uh, and inspired Bob Pierce to start this organization called World Vision. You know, that one incident, the two incidents, were the reason of why God, you know, showed his vision, gave us this vision, the great vision. To, towards humanitarian work, towards social work around the world, uh, through World Vision, also Samaritan's Purse, that you know uh, supports the needy uh, throughout the world until today. Lacks and lacks, millions of people and children are being supported. That's the birth of the vision. And 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 uh, Bob Pierce did respond to the question of what are you going to do? Even as we close. The first chapter meditation let us you know pray, come to god in prayer and tell him lord help me also lord to prioritize things in my life that lord we will tell to god that let your concern become my concern and let me not be careless and let our prayer let our life be soaked in prayer um, god uses lives that are soaked in prayer and let us you know, not be uh, put a life let us prioritize purity, holiness in our life. And let us carry out what God is asking us to do. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, helping us, oh Lord, to begin to study the book of Nehemiah, Master. Yes, Lord, even as his uh, word suggests, name suggests, uh, Father, that you are a God who comforts. And Lord, you comfort us so that as, Lord, we read in uh, the New Testament of Father, the epistles, of uh, Paul to Corinthians, Lord, you comfort us so that we may comfort others. That is a great purpose of doing that, our Father. And Lord, even as we study this uh, chapter, uh, book of Nehemiah, Father, we pray that, Lord, you would help us, Lord, to rebuild areas in our personal lives, of Father. And not only in our lives, even as we rebuild, the Lord, our lives of God, even as we put things in order, Lord, as we strongly believe that you will use us, you will use us, a Father, to rebuild others' lives, a Father. Lord, we, right now, we, Lord, we look at the, the current state of the world, that which is truly broken, like those walls of Jerusalem, a Father. People are troubled, as in those days, a Father. People are in shame and distress, as Father, Lord. We look at, Lord, the lives that are being destroyed, a Father. It truly bothers us, a Father, that, Lord, that every day during these times we hear, People committing suicides of God, out of depression of God. People who are losing jobs. Father, we pray that, Lord, like Nehemiah, Lord, that we will mourn, we will weep, we will fast and pray for these people of God, for the current state of the world, O oh Master. 
And Lord, I pray that you would use us, Lord, to encourage people. Lord, to Lord, uh, Lord uh, take this people of Father in prayer to your Lord throne of Father. Yes, God, continue to Lord, give us the same Lord heart of prayer of Father God. A brokenness, O oh Master. As Bob Pierce says, let our hearts, hearts also be, should be broken, O oh Father, with things that break your heart, O oh God. Thank you, Father. Even as we begin to do these things, O oh Lord, and commit everything into your prayer, Lord, let Lord, let your vision be, Lord, uh, be clear to us, O oh Father, and help, help us, Lord, to do that we need to do, O oh Father, not to be careless, but to commit, O oh Father. Thank you, Master. Lord. Continue. We commit every one of us into your hands. We give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen.